my name is Eva Lisa Meda. I work at the UMC as a data scientist, and I'm going to tell you about how we are using deep neural networks to remove personal information from case narratives. And here it goes. <laughs> It has been my hope that while we wait for conclusive science, stories will preserve diversity in our theories of mind. This is a quote by Peter D. Kramer in the New York Times. It emphasizes the role of narratives during hypothesis generation. In reports of suspected adverse drug reactions, there are many structured fields that of course include important information for analysis and automatic screening but there's also some clinically relevant information that does not fit into these structured fields and that might instead be reported in the free text narrative fields of the reports. This we found at a study made at the UMC. We found that three out of four narratives had an impact on the causality or the clinical assessment of the uh, assessment. So we found that it has an impact and this is because they include information that is not included in the structured fields, that is, for example, the severity of the event or the quality of life of the patient. And now will come the example <laughs> where there is a case where the patient had an impact on the quality of life, he couldn't, uh, she couldn't sit. And this and other highlighted, of the parts, uh, highlighted parts of the narrative are clinically relevant, but they might not be included in the structured fields. This information can also be sensitive for the patient, and this is problematic if the narrative also includes personal information, such as the name of the patient or the dates of admission. Dates can, of course, also be clinically relevant. So if we want to share the narrative while preserving the patient's privacy, we have to make it anonymous by removing personal information or by replacing it with placeholders. Dates could, for example, be replaced by relative dates to preserve the clinically relevant information. Other information that sh should be removed can be names, ID numbers, but also indirect information such as uh, dates, ages, or locations that in combination could be used to identify the individual. The task of removing personal information is called uh, de-identification, and a de-identified version of the narrative such as this one could be shared while at the same time preserving the patient's privacy and then be used for, for use in pharmacovigilance. We could do this um, by hand, but that's tedious work. And uh, human annotators also make mistakes. They might miss some of the personal information. So instead, I say we should do it automatically. This is, of course, a very difficult task, but in the last couple of years, Artificial neural networks have revolutionized the ways in which computers solve problems. For example, in the case of image classification, autonomous driving, and machine translation. Artificial neural networks are inspired by our brain. They try to model the brain's neural network. Artificial neural networks have been around for a very long time, at least since the 1960s. But it has only been during the last couple of years that we have had the computational power and the amount of digital data to train these deep neural networks, so networks with many layers of neuron, in, a, in an effective way. During our de-identification project at the UMC, uh, we are using deep neural networks, but we use them in combination with more traditional methods, such as a logistic regression and a rule-based method. Each of these methods will produce their own output, their own prediction of which part of the narrative includes personal information, and we then use a so-called ensemble method that combines the, uh, these outputs by voting and making, creating a de-identified version of the narrative. Our method can be considered restrictive because instead of trying to remove personal information, we use an inverse approach we start by removing everything. Only when our, our method, our algorithm, thinks that uh, a part of the narrative is safe with a high probability, we will allow that part of the narrative back in. Using this method, we can currently remove 90% of the personal information from case narratives 
while at the same time preserving 94% of the rest of the information. This result can be considered very good, considering that we've currently only trained our method on electronic health record data from a de-identification challenge. So we've not yet trained our new networks on the real case narrative data. New networks, the new networks are, however, expected to perform better if they are trained on the real case narratives. So our next step will therefore be to collaborate with the National Stan Center to improve the performance of our method even further to bring real value to pharmacovigilance. Thank you.